welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins, uh, Jenkins Documentation Special Interest Group. Um, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and we can look at the agenda and talk through it and then go through the material. So on today's agenda, we've got report of previous action items. And I put in a documentation progress status report, including a couple of demos and some discussion. Uh, then mm -hmm. uh, developer meetups are a topic for this time. And then we'll look at some statistics on contributors and contributions to close out the session if we have time. Uh, I capture those the statistics on contributors and contributions just in case we need them. And that's it. Oleg, anything else you'd like to be sure we include on the agenda? No, nothing specific. Well, uh, one topic uh, would be about uh, Google Season of Dogs. Uh, but yeah, maybe we need more people to discuss it. And it's not time to pressure. Okay, well, but that's a, that's a very good one. Let me put that, I'm gonna put that down to the end right before the data report, because as we consider participation in Google Season of Docs, it needs a lot more preparation. Good, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Okay, so report on previous action items. I had created a pull request, but it was empty for docs project ideas. I've closed that rather than spend, waste time in the pull request queue with it. The idea that I've got is I'm going to map the pages and concepts from the wiki to Jenkins.io, then create tickets for those concepts so that we can then have anybody pick up a ticket as a newbie friendly ticket and use, use that as a way to make progress on this. My apologies that I haven't done this yet. Um, mm. It's coming. Yeah, but one thing I don't understand here is, so for me, newbie friendly uh, documentation tickets and docu uh, docs project ideas were quite orthogonal because yeah, newbie friendly tickets are small tasks for those one who want to just start and documentation project ideas were rather for Google season of docs and other bigger programs like community bridge. So they would have been rather about major projects. So uh, both, uh, both activities make sense, but uh, yeah, I don't think that you be friendly ticket. Yeah, really so, so what I, the, 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 the thinking I had on that was mm -hmm. that newbie friendly made sense for some of the tasks because they may be purely a, a transposition of content from one place to another and small tasks like that could easily be newbie friendly. I could do it as a separate, as a separate topic. It just for me it fit with if there's something on the wiki that is in fact easy to transform that justifies being newbie friendly there are other things which are yep. not easy and really are a, a major idea that won't be newbie friendly yeah i totally understand that but yeah what i was trying to say that newbie friendly tasks are not uh, docs project ideas ah, ah okay you're saying that those are too small to justify being a, a project idea should be a uh, a, a major effort. Okay, I, I can. Yeah. Uh, so, well, it still makes sense. Uh, it's probably just another action item because we right. need a newbie friendly tickets. That's for sure. Uh, well, but, uh, yeah. So, but if we have uh, run a documentation project, for example, on community bridge, mm -hmm. then uh, well, we could take uh, 100 plugins and say we are going to migrate them as a documentation project. But yeah, to be honest, I don't expect it to be exciting. Uh, for whomever works on that. So I would rather not plan such a project. Right, right, mm -hmm. agreed. I think, I think the concept I had for newbie friendly is fair for you to, your observation is, is accurate that, hey, that may not belong in a project idea. We just put up a, as part of our, our newcomer package, if they would like to contribute the documentation, they click through to the newbie friendly and they can get them. That's good, yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so other gaps. Oh. Great, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So then as a regular action item, an ongoing action item, I have a, I need to, I send out a summary of the doc sig 
uh, to highlight that for the governance. Um, I assume that's still okay, Oleg, that I don't need to report those. The JEP we had agreement is okay, or the, the governance board is okay just receiving a summary by email. Uh, so I think that uh, it would be nice to have, for example, a uh, uh, summary uh, as a dev list, that's for sure. I mean, for example, quarterly summary or monthly summary doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, if you talk about bigger scope, for example, if you want to highlight uh, all the work which happened uh, since the beginning of uh, the SIG, it might uh, make sense to have a blog post. For example, in my New Year blog post, I just uh, added some stats. But if you want uh, to write, uh, let's say, a separate blog post about documentation SIG, I think it's a great opportunity. Okay, good, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we've, we had the, the idea that we wanna do a developer meetup. And I think I've got an additional, um, additional idea for a developer meetup that we'll talk about later on here. Um, mm -hmm. If I recall correctly, Oleg, this, the developer meetup, this one probably won't happen in January. It seems more likely a February or maybe a March topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks so. Great, all right. Uh, we have some regressions which are not related to documentation seek, but yeah, right now we are not ready to deliver on that. Right, okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right, then on to the documentation progress report. So. Uh, I wanted to show a demonstration of the plugins.io static site. I am thoroughly impressed with how how much good and solid work Gavin Mogan has done and what a wonderful piece of work this is to show to people. So instead of a dynamically generated site, it's now static. So if I click here, here's the plugins index and it was the page opens quickly. Now, if I choose some plugin, let's say mailer, there it found it and bang it's up and running no generation process this came from github it's been extracted from the readme as code uh, likewise uh, we get the same thing with their plugins now that are allowed to have a table of contents like the git plugin now has this automatically maintained table of contents here thanks to it being an ascii doc so with, config, with documentation as code, we've got a much better set of documentation for plugins and the, the plugin pages load much faster. As far as I can tell, our search rankings seem to be improving. Uh, we've got, got good results happening. If we look at things like configuration as code, mm -hmm. it shows a really elegant use of badges to highlight the progress of various pieces of the of the code so it's got a link to its code quality pages it's got all sorts of helps for users now there's still more to be done there's active discussion should we collapse these dependencies how should we present but gavin has done simply an amazing job on this oleg any things that you wanted to be sure we, we highlighted here All right, so then in addition to the progress that's been made on the plugin site, we've also, we're in progress on migrating documentation for plugins from the wiki to GitHub so that instead of maintaining documentation separate from a plugin, it's inside the plugin source code. Uh, we've got a, a really nice plugin migration progress report that Gavin provided for us as well and that is now hosted on Jenkins.io and delighted to see that we have over 200 plugins that have completed their migration to documentation as code and several even in this top list have pull requests pending that are ready to ready to go for the next release of that version of that particular plugin yeah to be specific we have around five oh, sorry around 50 plugins uh, which uh, have pending uh, pull requests or pending releases, uh, but we have uh, some uh, implementation issues which still need to be uh, delivered. 
So I'll talk about it uh, later. Um, so the next uh, topic, by the way. Oh, uh, great. Yeah, but um, right now uh, there is much more than uh, nine plugins waiting. Excellent. Well, and I, I think that's good to talk to the next one. Why don't we go on to that next topic? Oleg, oh, rat. Oleg, let's have you take on the, the documentation migration topic. Okay, just a second. I, I can't hear you, Oleg. Am I back online? You are back online, very good. Okay, so, okay, let's uh, keep our fingers crossed that uh, this network is better. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to, to add a few things to what Mark presented. I'll just share my screen. Just a second, yeah, I'll share my screen. See, I think I have to stop sharing. Yep. Yep. There you go, yep. I've stopped, so now you should okay. be able to share. Okay, this is my screen? Yes. Yeah, uh, so uh, by the way, one thing uh, Mark forgot to talk about, uh, to say about plugin site, that the plugin site is also now mobile friendly, because before mm -hmm. that, in the previous implementation, we had some issues with styles, etc. But now it was updated and it looks much better on uh, mobile screens, which is important because, yeah, now we can just uh, reference links in social media and uh, they don't look look like crap. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and I am I am delighted with the mobile layout. I think he's done a brilliant job with it. Yeah, so thanks a lot to Gavin and Tim Jack Okay, now uh, let's go to the migration status. So, yeah, as I said, uh, what we have on the, uh, um, the reason for that is that uh, we basically, am I still online? You are, yeah. No. Yeah, because in, in my case, uh, network just breaks everywhere. Okay, uh, so um, our problem is we exported that it pulls information from um, just from hard-coded list of pen and pull requests and for us it's a moving target so i spent some time um, this week to just uh, query github and uh, to find uh, all of pending uh, pull requests so what i can say that we have 24 plugins which already have merged uh, documentation migration to github but which haven't been released yet and 19 uh, plugins which have pending pull requests and if you're maintainer of one of these plugins probably you would like to take a look so okay so and the the status of those pull requests is reflected in the column that they occur in so it's automatically yes. updated when someone merges it moves that moves something from left to right i cannot automatically uh, automate that uh, because um, automation uh, well i will need to update it a bit uh, the default automation uh, on github for kanban boards uh, is to done so when you merge it it goes to done Oh, it and does. Okay. Yeah. So I will need to update it, uh, but right now automation is disabled for this board. So you have to look at this uh, board and manually move uh, pull requests which emerged. So I can automate ah. it later. Okay, and I, I had missed that. the The crucial thing here is when a change for wiki doc for to convert GitHub documentation from to to doc, GitHub documentation from wiki happens, the merge is necessary but it's not sufficient because we need a release of the plugin and yeah. that's not a column that's represented here oh well uh, that is done which basically means release mm -hmm. uh, for us it's not a problem for, uh, for moving from merge uh, to done because the wiki exporter if you go here um it's uh, for released plugins it pulls information from the update center so oh. when you take a look at this status oc, basically this information comes from the update center. So it has some lag, but uh, once you release a plugin in a few hours, it will be moved to green status here. So you do not uh, rely on this board. Um, but 
it's rather for our information as uh, documentation seek uh, so that we can look here and see means needs some assistance yeah that's what we have and yes we probably can start this migration but yeah the status for uh, most used plugins uh, becomes better and better and we know that uh, all uh, pipeline uh, plugins have been migrated uh, they just need a release so oh, oh that's so we we've, we've got a and now are the pipeline plugins that have been migrated but need a release do they appear in your project board they do mm, they the, do because i captured uh, some pull requests maybe not all of them yeah for example here change your roles for each plugin uh, to point to github so it's uh, for pipeline model we finish declarative okay. uh, for other pipeline plugins i might have missed uh, the pull requests to be honest so i need to double check because yeah again there is no automatic creation of this column uh, because yeah plugin maintainers just create whatever they want and we need to capture that somehow and if I want to add things to this board, is there something particular, some permission I need to be granted, or as a, a contributor to Jenkins, can I already do it? Uh, as a contributor to Jenkins, you can do that. So how I configured uh, the board, I just found all these so settings. Uh, no, maybe. no, I just um, added the documentation I seek members here. So it's not everybody. Oh, okay. Well, I can basically open the floodgates if somebody wants, uh, but yeah. The, the, this is great. The people who are doing the work are listed there and can record it. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. Mm. Okay, yeah, so these boards, well, basically it's better than uh, the implementation we had before, but it's still uh, far from being ideal. Here you can just query things, for example, so how I do that, for example, uh, GitHub, uh, yeah, I kill that. Uh, you can find some pull requests. For example, here there is a Google Auth plugin, which is not listed. So we can uh, just drag uh, and drop it to this column. Uh, yeah, so you can uh, use more advanced queries uh, to capture these plugins, but yeah, it's uh, still a lot of uh, missing, uh, missing plugins. Yeah, moving docs uh, from wiki yes. security so here for example we can see that uh, the status is merged so i just go to the pull request i can see that uh, yeah it's moved uh, i can check the commit and here i can see that uh, this pull request has been actually released uh, so jesse has already uh, did release yesterday i just put it to the so i don't need to worry mm. uh, and yeah, you can see that, uh, for example, there is a pipeline support plugin. So one uh, I was referencing, which is missing. Um, and here we can see that uh, it was migrated, but it wasn't released. Yeah, it, it, was, it was released. So, so that's again when you would drag into the done column. Nice. Uh, yeah, right. So it's mostly clear enough. But yeah, you can see that uh, there is a bunch of such plugins. So whomever wants to maintain that, uh, basically what you need to do for automation purposes, you just drag and drop uh, them to this column because the rest doesn't matter. It's just uh, history cleanup. Unfortunately, there is no good automation for that. So here, um, so it was released also. So we can uh, move it. But yeah, it's manual process, so not ideal. Well, but it gives us it gives us a very visual a visual picture. Now, I assume that the Wiki Exporter report, once they've released, it's they should also appear agent. in Wiki Exporter. Okay.
So Oleg, I think we may have lost you again. Um, they released, yeah. for example, we know plan support, but we cannot release. Okay. Am I online? You're breaking. You're breaking up. Um, so you said something about a support plugin released. I, I'm. I yeah, lost that. Sentence. I just said. Uh, yeah, I just said that. Uh, yeah, we had a pull request which we reviewed in the board, and if you go to the status, you can see that the status is green. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, so the so the wiki exporter yeah. is showing the correct correct status as well when it's all the way to released. Good. Yes. Excellent. So it doesn't need uh, any kind of uh, dashboard or manual actions. Eventually, it will be there. So this board is rather for in progress pull requests. Um, well, it's up to you whether you want to spend time on that or not. Right. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what I wanted to say. And in parallel, I'm also doing some migration uh, for non-plugin documentation uh, to Jenkins. You My said bad. you were doing, you, you're back. You said you were doing migration of non plugin documentation? Exactly. Because we still have a lot of other docs on Wiki. Uh, I moved, uh, well, a Team Jack moved a bunch of governance docs and moving mm -hmm. uh, the remaining docs uh, gradually. Uh, sometimes we had uh, to use um, uh, advanced migration, for example, for governance board meetings, because it was just not sustainable to keep the agenda on the plugin side, etc. So we improving the tooling there. Okay, I can just show it to you. So here's, for example, governance meeting. So now we use combination of static website and Google Doc, but the Google Doc is embedded. So even if you don't have uh, permissions to this Google Doc, you can just go and suggest changes uh, directly from the Jenkins IO page. So you don't really need to worry where this Google Doc is located. So you can find it here. So yeah, there are more such things, but yeah, uh, it requires additional steps for the migration. So the work is in progress. Excellent, thank you. And I know how much I've enjoyed interacting with that style of that style of page. That's that's been a great improvement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so before we move on, uh, yeah, we'll just move it here. For, um, I'm not sure whether I'm able to show the next demo. So I can definitely show it, but with uh, network stability. Think it makes sense to show it right now. I can try. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's up. That'd to be you. great. Yeah, I would. I would love it. I put it in there specifically because of how pleased I was with what I'd see, what I've seen, and how much it's made my job easier doing work on change logs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's uh, just uh, spend some time on that. Okay. I can just do the demo from my laptop. Okay, so for those ones who is watching uh, this meeting, um, that is um, a change log uh, for Jenkins IO. Um, yeah, it's hosted here, uh, but uh, this change log actually has a machine readable format. So it's a change log YAML, which is hosted on Jenkins IO. Um, so, so I will just find it here. So there is so yeah, there is wiki YAML file. Uh, this uh, YAML file it has fixed structure. So this structure includes um, uh, references uh, to issues, pull requests, uh, messages uh, to be displayed, uh, references to your fees. And actually, there is additional uh, there are additional features. For example, we can put multiple references so that users can see additional information uh, referenced. Um, and yeah, you can see an example here. For example, we referenced remote and change logs using this mechanism. 
Um, and uh, we are also working on referencing contributors. So if you scroll down to the recent change logs, you can see that the format expanded because here we inject authors uh, to changes um, and uh, there will be more changes before it's uh, really visualized on the Jenkins web interface. But at least uh, there, is, uh, there are some uh, changes to that. But every time uh, you cut a release, in the case of Jenkins, it's at least weekly. Uh, somebody has to create a pull request and to submit this uh, change log. So at the moment, it's uh, Mark uh, Wade who is doing that. Before that, it was Daniel Beck. Um, sometimes I was doing it uh, in emergency cases because nobody likes my change logs. Uh, but uh, yeah, the problem is that somebody has to do that every release. And we also wanted to do some kind of automation for that because it uh, solves maintenance time, which could be uh, spent on better things like integrating and reviewing pull requests. Uh, so in order to do that, um, uh, there was a tool uh, which was originally created by ben Daniel Beck, which is called uh, Jenkins Core Changelog uh, Generator. Core change log generator. Basically, it's a tool which was is able to draft these YAMLs for particular versions, and it also supports um, LTS change logs because our LTS change logs are slightly different, um, and uh, the most of users use them. And so, yeah, this tool can also generate these kind of change logs. I won't be showing it today because it requires access uh, to Jenkins Jira to pull additional information. And I don't want to expose password there. So yeah, no demo for stable change logs, but I will show weekly. So uh, this tool was created by Daniel Beck, but historically it was quite difficult to use because it was a bunch of uh, Ruby scripts, uh, which wasn't, we are not running, for example, on my machine. I'm a happy user of Windows, and uh, they were not also running on uh, modern machines, which we are not using uh, Bash as a default, uh, interpreter, etc. These scripts were still uh, working, uh, but they also had issues with uh, the format because they were not representing uh, the uh, changelog format strictly, so they required a lot of manual actions. And uh, yeah, in November and later, I spent some time in order to, to make that. So you can see that there are some releases. And now the tool operates in Docker, and it also generates change logs, which are much closer to the final format than they used to be before. There is still a lot of things to be done, but at least everybody can take these change logs and uh, just uh, generate them. So let me show it to you. You don't. Uh, I am using uh, official Docker container, so we have containers uh, delivery uh, configured for this repository. Um, and if you need uh, to cut a change log, you basically run it with your GitHub credentials. We need GitHub in order to access the REST API to pull information about pull requests. And uh, if you generate um, stable change logs, you also need uh, access to Jira because um, our backporting metadata is actually in Jira, not in GitHub. It's something we could improve, but yeah, that's uh, the current state. So I run uh, this tool. Uh, I didn't pass version parameter, and it will be just generating change log for the incoming weekly release. So basically, based on all pull requests which we have integrated, um, and uh, yeah, the tool can also generate diffs between versions if you need that, or generate a change log for a particular version. And uh, yeah, here you can get uh, this change log. So it's uh, generated automatically. Here you can see that, uh, well, basically uh, there is a pull request. Uh, it's uh, fixed by JC, which was merged recently. Uh, it's a bug fix, um, it references pull request issues, and it includes a draft of the message. So currently the draft includes a pull request title, so similarly like we do in release drafter pipelines. Um, and it also includes proposed change logs because Jenkins pull request template uh, for Jenkins core also includes uh, proposed change logs. Uh, so Jenkins CI, where is it? Yeah, Jenkins CI Jenkins. Uh, so we can just take a pull request. Uh, okay. I haven't seen what's this pull request, but it's from Daniel, and he followed the template. Uh, so here you can see that uh, there is proposed uh, a change log, which is. Uh, uh, the text which will be added uh, in addition to that. So then uh, when Mark or somebody who is a change log copy editor, uh, uh, he will just take uh, this text or, and uh, process it to the final change log. 
We can improve it later, but at least it generates some stops. And it can also break down the change logs if needed, because um, the main purpose of this format is to actually supply multiple change log entries if needed. And it's a problem with release drafter, because for release drafter, you have to go to the peer title, modify it to include all the text, etc. Mm -hmm. Here we resolve it uh, in a different way. Well, it could be supported by the release drafter, but it's just not supported at the moment. So that's how it works, but uh, it wasn't enough for us because um, we also wanted to make it a part of a continuous delivery pipeline so that uh, there is no automation, uh, no even need to, uh, for running that. And it will be also ideal uh, to provide users uh, for change log of incoming changes so that the users can see what's going to land, maybe on Jenkins IO or at least on GitHub repository. Uh, for that purpose, uh, we don't have uh, a tool uh, at the moment. Um, we didn't have a tool, and now we have a hug. Um, the most of our repositories use the release drafter, and for Jenkins, you can see that uh, there was a release drafter, which was again generating a YAML stub, which is similar to what the core change log uh, automation tool does. But yeah, it was generated by release drafter with a lot of hugs. Starting from the next weekly release, it will be reverted, and now we generate um, user-readable change logs. So there is a glitch, and uh, the change log gets duplicated. Um, I still need to figure out why, uh, but yeah, uh, we'll fix that. Well, it's likely because of inheritance from the master file, uh, but at least uh, now there will be a markdown change log, uh, which is uh, released immediately after the weekly release. So you don't need a uh, full pull request uh, towards uh, the master change log to be merged. And uh, now it's also possible to see incoming changes. Now, what we do, um, I spent some time uh, to make uh, this Docker container actually compatible with GitHub Actions. It's not documented, but you can uh, use it from GitHub Actions, and I will show it to you. So yeah, yesterday, Mark was grumbling uh, about uh, Travis demo during uh, the Jenkins Seek meeting. Today, I'm doing GitHub Actions demo. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, what we have, uh, we have a simple pipeline here. Um, well, it's called workflow, um, and it actually invokes multiple steps. So it invokes a step uh, for GitHub release draft, um, the one I wish you've already seen. It also invokes our changelog generator, and then um, it invokes publishing. So, uh, and for publishing, I first started uh, publishing to release draft. Um, it caused some issues, so it's not something I'm going uh, to use at the moment. Uh, but we also have um, changelog YAML. So here uh, I just um, uh, inject a changelog draft, which is generated by this tool um, into artifact being generated by a GitHub action. So what it means, if you go to actions, you can see that uh, there is changelog draft action, which is being triggered uh, on every push at the moment. Uh, later, I will implement uh, support uh, for tag pushes so that we can easily access changelog for a particular tag. But right now, you can just see that uh, there is a bunch of pull requests. And here, for example, we have that, uh, a pull request for the last week here, uh, because yeah, so it's a change triggered by KK. So for example, we can just go here and see changelog draft generated for the previous release. So there is a bunch of actions, and there is generate YAML changelog. So what you've seen in my console, you can also see it here, but for real changelog. Um, and yeah, here's a draft being generated on the GitHub actions. Um, and after that, this draft is being uploaded. So I'm not sure whether it's available for the, yeah, it's available for this commit. So, Oleg, yeah. I think this one you picked was not the release from KK. It's, this is one of yours. I think you picked one line below. Yeah, one line below because the release from KK basically casts the release. And the ah. change log for incoming release will be empty. Oh, uh, oh, I see. So you had to do it to show this. I see. I misunderstood. Yeah, that. right. So that's why I want to implement support of text so that it uh, will become uh, more trivial. But yeah, I haven't gone to it. Uh, got to it. And here there is change log YAML. So again, it's generated by two. We can just download it. Unfortunately, well. It will be the same, but just in archive. So you can upload, download YAML, take it, in, submit a pull request uh, to Jenkins.io website. 
So this is what we have now. What we can do later, we can automate creation of pull requests. Uh, we can improve this formatting so that uh, there is pipeline uh, which basically delivers pull requests to Jenkins IO. Um, we also can uh, add support of text so that it will be explicit where to look. And uh, yeah, uh, this is just uh, one of my next steps for this generation. In addition to that, um, uh, what we want to, what we need to do for the next releases uh, is to gen uh, automatically generate upgrade guidelines. Uh, we started doing some uh, changes on that front. For example, now there is a new pull request template, uh, which requires people to specify upgrade guidelines if it's applicable. So, for example, here it's not applicable, but we can take um, pull request. Um, we have labels for that. Label and here we have here we have too many labels, but uh, yeah, great guideline needed. So there is the attack here, and you can see that there are seven pull requests uh, stuck. And the last one is, for example, from uh, uh, Jeff uh, Thompson for removal of agent protocols, the change that we announced for the previous speaker. And here you can see that uh, we have a text of these proposed change logs. So we updated our review guidelines, and now we expect uh, submitters with breaking changes to propose upgrade guidelines right here. So we can use uh, the change log generator uh, to also generate upgrade guidelines. Well, not final ones, but at least drafts. Mm -hmm. um, so that we can have a, a page here and again mark and consume this page. Oh, like your your audio is breaking up, unfortunately. Could you could you yeah. take that last? The since you arrived at this page, we've lost a, a bunch of your audio. Could you try describe okay. it again? Yeah, yeah. So what I was saying is that these guidelines um, um, are structured. So if you open uh, this uh, change log, you can see that um, there are multiple entries. Um, and these entries, um, again, uh, they're uh, using machine-readable format. So this guideline is generated, and it means that we can also generate templates for that. Uh, so let's take a look. Mm, I'm just uh, planning to show one example. So upgrades. And yeah, so the uh, somewhere here. So my network breaks again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, my plan is to start generating these ASCII docs uh, so that uh, we can consume them later. This is just amazing. Excellent work. I am so pleased. Thank you very much. This is really great. Mm, yes. So you can call this tool set uh, auto Daniel Beck or something like that later. Uh, but yeah, basically it uh, automates uh, the work which uh, Daniel was doing for years. And thanks a lot uh, to him. And yeah, now Mark is doing that. So yeah, let's try to automate it a bit. Uh, thank you very, very much. It's exceptional. I, I, I know how much I enjoyed, how much it's imp it has improved since since I started doing it and how, how nice this tooling is. Looking forward to the tooling improvements that are coming. That's even, even better. Thank you very, very much, Oleg. What a great experience it is. Okay. Thank you, John. So I guess that's it uh, with my demo. There is no people to ask questions, but yeah, if needed, uh, you can ask uh, in Gitter. Right. So the doc sig has its Gitter channel available as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just look. quite active, thanks to Gavin and team. <laughs> it is. It's it's been very active. That's really great. Thank you. So mm -hmm. next topic that I had on the agenda was J Jenkins Developer Meetups 2020, and one of the t ideas that came to mind as I was looking at the configuration as code plugin. I submitted a pull request to it for a minor change, 
and saw a very impressive array of tooling that they automatically invoked that I, I had never used before. So mm -hmm. yeah, I know how to use Dependabot and I know how to use Release Drafter, but I've never used Codacy. I have I just started using Sonar Source, but they also have an lgtm.com that appears to do, um, to do security checks. And I assume there are other services like that. And my thought was it might be good for a developer meetup to bring the configurationist code team or others together to say, hey, here are some things that are available in the, in, in the open source world that could help you do better at your plugin development. Uh, Oleg, your comments, what do you think? Is that viable? Is that a reasonable thing? Are there other tools I should add here? Well, there is a, a lot of tools we could integrate because if you take a look at um, Jenkins organization, there are around uh, 20 different GitHub applications which are connected, mostly for different static analysis use cases or code style checks. So Codacy, SNR, and other tools, so they're just examples of these tools. And if somebody wants uh, to come to the meeting and share information, it would be nice. Or especially if somebody wants uh, to document guidelines about how to use these tools with uh, Jenkins plugins. Because yeah, we have guidelines for release drafter, we have guidelines for Dependabot, well, in some sense, in Google Doc, uh, but not for other tools. So why not? Good. So the idea, so uh, you, you, good point. Um, can I, I assume there's a way for me to query and see what the applications are that are used and which plugins are using those applications, then I could potentially reach out to the authors, the maintainers of those plugins and say, hey, would you like to join us for this session and tell us how you're benefiting from this? Well, in order to get a list, you have to be a GitHub organization admin. I'm not sure ah, whether you okay. have. So I do not, I'm not an org admin, so. Yeah, I can uh, provide uh, some links. Actually, it's even more than 20. Uh, so, yeah, if you just create an action item for me, I can uh, provide this mapping. All right, so. And there, the plugins that use them. Great, thank you. Okay. Will do. And so that that feels like to me a very interesting and I'm not sure we could assemble it in the roughly one week that we have prior to me going offline for about a week to do FOSDEM. So I assume this will be a February or later developer meetup. But I, I, I would like that and I'm happy to, to convene it. I would I would love to moderate it and gather mm -hmm. the people together. Well, if you need to meet up in one week, I can, could do a review of Dependabot because I have everything uh, to run it if needed. Um, so yeah, it will be likely a shorter meet up, maybe 30 to 40 minutes with all uh, the video of discussion, but I can do it uh, next week. And ah. for, yeah, and for the rest of the tools, yeah, we can just um, uh, start doing it in the background. So this draft is something we already presented. Mm -hmm. Right, that was done. That was done in a previous in a mm -hmm. previous um, developers meetup. Yeah. So do you have a do you have a you you would be okay if I scheduled something for next week? Yes. Great. All right. Uh, I will yeah, do that. preferably Thursday or Friday. Um, I guess Friday would be the best uh, reason, uh, the best uh, day. Great. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joe. All right. And then we had a topic on the Jenkins Palm and Bomb. And you had indicated there's probably some additional work there that needs to happen development side before we host a meetup. So that one we let wait for a few weeks and let it continue evolving. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So yeah, then we do topic for Dependabot. Um, 
and you yeah, probably I'll uh, try to get somebody else uh, to cover the JavaScript part because uh, originally I didn't want to cover that, uh, but we have some examples. So yeah, we can just announce uh, one thing. Uh, so yeah, also uh, I will cover Docker, that's for sure. Ah, okay, good, all right. So, mm -hmm. and that's one that I know how to use the Java one. I've never used the Docker one, so that's good. Well, Java one looks, works better, but Docker kind of works. All right. Mm -hmm. Great, excellent, thank you. Okay, thank you too. All right, so Google season of docs, we are, we, are, we are actually past time, Oleg. I'm prone to say let's mm -hmm. shift Google Season of Docs till next week's meeting. We can talk yeah, further can about it then. Uh, I did want to go over a brief look at the, the data from the contributors and contributions. Uh, really elegant thanks for your work on the time from pull request to engagement. We are averaging under 85% of our pull requests get some acknowledgement well within one day. And mm -hmm. we just went on the latest bump to slightly over one day, but our, our mean time for the 50th percentile is very nicely in the one hour that the pull request backlog on Jenkins.io is looking really good. Uh, time mm -hmm. from PR open to merge likewise is looking good. Uh, we've merged six over 60 pull requests in the last month and uh, we've only got 11 open pull requests at this moment with 2700 over 2700 that have been merged over the life of the project the data looks really good let's keep doing it anything else you wanted to note there oleg mm, i think from my side so yeah, uh, one uh, fine, uh, one uh, interesting start, um, which I posted in the New Year blog post, and that we had 187 um, documentation contributors um, just uh, during the last quarter. Uh, so it includes um, basically everybody who modified uh, Markdown or ASCII doc files within Jenkins organization and also within Jenkins IO. So it's not an accurate number, but uh, it provides some approximation. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just for your stats. Thanks very much. Thank you, thank you. All right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead. I think we're done. I'm gonna go ahead and call this as a done session. Thanks very, very much for your time, Oleg. And notes are here, the recording will be posted to the YouTube playlist for the documentation special interest group. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, too.